Hey guys, Sarge here from 100 Games 100 Days. Today, I want to show you exactly how the great scientist Ibum Khaldun works in Civilization VI. A fairly controversial and confusing great person if you ask me. So let's take a look. Ibn Khaldun is a Renaissance-era great scientist. Its retire effects grants the chosen campus two housing and one amenity. Simple enough. It also increases the non-food yield benefits of happiness in your empire by 40%. Or so the description says. First, let's quickly take a look at the first part of the ability. If we retire the great scientist in the campus the city it belonged to, it will gain an additional two housing and one amenity. So in this city of London, we have two amenities and we have six housing. We have our great scientist in Ibum Khaldun. We retire. Now the city has three amenities and eight housing. As you can see here, we're getting one amenity from the district and we are getting two housing from the district. That would be the campus where we retired the great scientist. You can see in the city screen, it shows up as one amenity and two housing from districts. Interestingly, if the campus is pillaged or even destroyed, the amenity and housing will still apply. But even though the description says that the campus will get the housing and amenity, it appears to be applying to the city it belongs to and not the campus. But that's not even the contentious part. The second part of this great person's ability is that it increases non-food yield benefits of happiness in your empire by 40%. Before we continue, it's important to know that if your city is happy, your non-food yields will increase by 10%, and if your city is ecstatic, they will increase by 20%. Non-food yields are culture, production, science, faith and gold. In this example, my city is content, i.e. not happy or ecstatic. If I use the great scientist, nothing changes to my current yields. We're still getting 4.5 science, for example, and 5 production, for example, like we were getting before. In this example, my city is happy. So you can see we're getting a total of 12% non food yields. Now remember that being happy gives us 10% non-food yields already, so this great scientist is only giving us an extra 2% to non-food yields. So if we hover over London and go down to our yields, you can see that we're getting 12% on our culture, 12% on our production, 12% on our science, faith, and gold. In this example, our city is now ecstatic. We're getting 24% additional yields from amenities. Being ecstatic gives us 20% non-food yields, so the great scientist is only giving us an additional 4% non-food yields if our city is ecstatic. So you can see at the bottom, we're getting 24% on our culture, production, science, faith, and gold. The confusing part for me was that I initially thought you'd get 40% on top of the current 10 or 20% for being happy or ecstatic which would give us a whopping 50% or 70% non-food yield, which would be extremely overpowered. The contentious part of this great person is that the description says the non-food yield benefit increases by 40%, but from these examples, unless I'm doing the math wrong, it looks like it's only increasing by 20% if you are happy or ecstatic. Personally, I think this is a pretty weak great person. Even if you manage to get 50 of each non-food yield, so for example, 50 science, 50 culture, 50 production, 50 gold, that would only generate one extra yield of each type if you're happy. Remember, the more yields you're generating in a city means your cities have a high population, which means you require more amenities, which means it makes it harder to keep cities content, let alone happy or ecstatic. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have I math wrong? Even if you were getting the 40% like the description says, I still don't think it's that powerful, but would love to be proved wrong. Let me know if there's any other topics you'd like me to cover. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Happy saving, and I'll see you next time.